After having performed the complete quality control in the previous videos, we will discuss the next step of the workflow in this video, and that is how to perform a de novo assembly using our reads. Before we get started in Galaxy, I would like to give some more information about the most important parameter that has to be set for the assemblers. This parameter is the k-mir value. The following graph shows in a simplified way how the assembler combines the reads into context. The reads in our FASTQ file are all part of a larger segment of DNA. Of those reads, all possible formers, so this is all combinations of four bases that are found in the read, are extracted, the duplicate ones are discarded, and the algorithm runs through all possible formers to align the sequence into a context. In this example, the value for the k was 4, but in reality you have to choose an optimal k value, which is much higher. Selecting the best k however, requires some optimization. Larger k lead to a bias of the results towards higher abundance isoforms, but also lead to longer contexts. Lower k values tend to lead to a bias towards lower abundance isoforms, but sequencing errors can quickly lead to erroneous paths and many small contexts. In any case, the k value should be larger than the shortest repeat element, as repeat elements always overlap, and the algorithm needs a distinct overlap to create the context. As we will see, you can either let the software calculate the optimal k value for you, or you can find an approximate optimal k value for the species in your experiment by looking in the literature. There are two tools installed in Galaxy to do assembly. You can find them under NGS Assembly, Velvet Optimizer and Spades. In general, we can say that spades yields the best results, but Velvet Optimizer has the advantage of having a built-in optimization function to select the best gaming value for your analysis. First, we'll start with Velvet Optimizer. When we open this tool, we see that we have to give a start gamer size, an end gamer size, and a gamer search step size. So Velvet Optimizer will go through all gamers between the start and the end value, each time incrementing the gamer value with the step size. For Velvet Optimizer, the maximum gamer size that you can select is 251. The gamer sizes always have to be odd integers, and this is the same for all assemblers. The step size needs to be an even integer, so that when you're adding this number to the previous gamer value, you will always get an odd number again. So next, we set our input files to the clean reads that we created before. So this will be the R1 paired and the R2 paired output from Trinomatic. We can also set some advanced parameters if we would like, but we're going to keep the basic ones for now, and we just click Execute. Now, this will run for a few minutes, so I'll just fast forward and we'll continue when uh, the assembly is done. So Velvet Optimizer has finished now, and we see that two output files have been created. The first file holds all the contexts that were created, so if we click on the eye icon, we will get the first megabyte of the file with all the contexts. And we also have a second file with some statistics on these contexts. Now to assess the quality of our assembly, we're mostly interested in the N50 value and the number of contexts. The N50 value is defined as the shortest contact length at 50% of the assembly. It's a bit easier to understand when we look at a graphical representation of this definition. So if we have a thousand base pair assembly, 50% of that assembly is 500 base pairs. Next, we line up all the contexts that were created from large to small, and we find that the first context is 300 base pairs, which is smaller than the 50% value of 500 base pairs. We add a second context, and this brings us to 400 base pairs in total, which is still smaller than the 500. So we keep adding contexts until we add the fifth context, which gives us a total of 520 base pairs, and this is over the 50% value of 500. This means that the N50 in this case is equal to 30. In general, a larger N50 is better, but this is not always the case. The N50 is what is called an imperfect proxy for assembly quality. Also keep in mind that you can only compare N50s between experiments if you are looking at assemblies of the same size. The number of contexts is also important. The lower the number of contexts, the better. Again, there is no clear number that you can give to say whether or not the number is low enough. After working with the same species for a while, you will develop a kind of intuition about which number indicates a bad quality and which number indicates a high quality. Going back to the Velvet Optimizer output, we see that in none of the files we find an N50 value or the number of contexts. But for Velvet Optimizer we can still retrieve this information when we click on the data sets, go to the information icon and click on standard error. So as told before in other videos, standard error does not 
necessarily mean that there is an error there. It just means that this output of the tool that is not the actual output that is created. In this case, that would be the context. If you look at this, we can scroll down. There's a lot of stuff printed out here, but at the end, we will find the final optimized assembly details. And here we can find the hash value that was used. So is this gamer value, the M50, the total number of context and some other statistics. So now we will perform the same assembly, but we'll use spades to do it. So we go to spades and we see that we also have to fill in the gamer value. But the maximum gamer value for space is 127. And we already know from Velvet Optimizer that for Velvet Optimizer, the ideal would be 151. So we'll just give it a few values that are really high. So 117, 121, and 127. We leave all the other options as is. We set our input files again to the R1 paired and the R2 paired cleaned input files that we created before and we click execute. This will start the spades run. And again, this will run for a pretty long time. So I'll fast forward and we'll continue once this run is finished. So space is finished now. And in this case, we have five output files. The first one is again, the context as a FASTA file. They can just view by clicking on the eye icon. It will load. Again, it's only the first megabyte that is shown, but these are all the contexts. You also get a file with the context dots, as was the case with Velvet Optimizer. Two files about the scaffold, so these are just a combined context, and then also a space log file. And if you look in the log file, we get some extra information, but again, the N50 and the number of contexts is missing. And for space, there is no way to get this information without using another tool. And that tool is called Quast, and that's what we'll be doing next. So to run Quast, you can either find it in NGS, QC, and Manipulation, or you can search for the tool over here by just typing Quast and opening Quast here. So we will give it our spades context. You can leave all the other options as is. Adding more information here will lead to more parameters in the output. You can just leave this as is and then execute. Again, Quast will run and you will get a number of output files in a few seconds. Doesn't take too long to run. So there it's finished. You get the output in several different formats. The first one is just a text file where you have the most important parameters listed here. The next one is a tab separated value file. There's also a tag file for people who are familiar with it. You have an interactive context viewer and you also have an HTML report. This HTML report gives the same information as a text file, but you find some graphs here that you can explore. It is also important to note that for cost, some of the statistics are based on context with the size of at least 500 base pairs, unless otherwise noted. So that can explain the difference between some numbers if you look at the raw output of the assembler and the cost output. When we compare the output of space with that of Velvet Optimizer, we see that the total number of context is lower, the N50 higher, and the longest context also longer. So that means that, as was expected, Spades gives higher quality context compared to Velvet Optimizer. So that concludes our assembly workflow. In the next video, we will cover read mapping.